So I'm recording this video a little early because it's going to be a very early Friday Sabbath and um, also a friend of mine asked if I could help a little. <coughs> so I'm going to try to get everything done that I need to today for that sake. So um, I will be sharing um, a few prompts that I filled out recently and um, just be sharing them and you're welcome to use them. I highly recommend these prompts. They help me so much with my inquiry, help me to use my energy, help me to do really great sweeps of my field and just where my mind is and connect with myself more. That's why I keep focusing on it and sharing it. Um, so first question is, do loved ones love us or do we love them? So I wrote, I love myself when I allow for others to love me as much as they want or need to love so that by creating space for love to be shared, I let them satisfy their desire to be someone who loves. The next thing I wrote was, the feeling is in my heart, the contemplation is in my mind, so to be loved means I received the sense of worthiness from outside of me to feel special and safe. And... Finally, focusing on how to match love languages that make others feel loved with my abilities and vice versa can require trial and error, and that's um, non-attachment to a specific outcome. <sighs> See, it's like um, patience and practice. Um, where is the purity in being? So I wrote first that I didn't do anything specific to be here because the space I take up was predetermined before I was born. And at any moment, there's something to surrender ourself to the stuff to. Um, like, wherever we're putting ourselves in, we could surrender it and nothing ever has to be buried. Like, it doesn't have to go underground. It could just, like you know, dwindle away and it's time. In other words, we stop holding on, we stop feeding it, we just allow it. <coughs> and that purity of just allowing it means I have nothing more for it. It's not like you're withholding, I just have nothing more for it. Um, next is, I don't know is the personal I has to be in linear realms, so nothing is truly certain from every angle, when it by nature needs a perspective to exist. So I am a desire embodied. That's the purity of being, right? So it's like some angle, this is exactly the way through. This is what's being yearned for and looked at. The world consciously wished for me before I was born, including how my parents, my ancestors yearned for whatever it was, which is the information that coded me or you or whoever is listening into being. And the next question, the next prompt, and you do one of these each day, but I'm giving you some feedback so that, and I'm right, and you write them down. What creates attraction? And then make little cards for yourself, like, right? So, and then, um, right, so tension, making a pocket of myself outside that I need to accept and incorporate and enjoy, even, um, that my desire is both imminent and present, and subtle shifts of newness. Seeing what I'm looking for, which is awareness, stability, restraint, mercy, that creates attraction, you know? Not having yes, or I can, mind state of reality, and instead getting fixated on a different option. Um, where am I being fake? Getting caught up in the nitty gritty, but trying to be more easygoing. Uh, generosity, it's so hard for me to give of my portion, but I want to be a genuine sharer. So I try to give whenever I'm asked, otherwise I end up feeling guilty or even worried I'll be punished. And I didn't want to admit this. That was really hard to admit. I didn't want to be that person. Um, that I have such a high sex drive and such, high desi such strong desire for pleasure, whether it's touch, praise, intimacies, um, or if it's weed, or if it's for like medicine, or if it's food for indulgence or soothing and comfort. But um, trying to be representing myself as above basal urges. And I hide my qualifications in professionalism and expertise to avoid others' misguided, unreasonable expectations. It's also called imposter syndrome sometimes. And I remember many years ago when I first learned about it and how I thought, like, once you get over it, it never comes back. But I'm still working on it sometimes. 
Um, what and, and I hide it because I don't want to be that person. So like I said, the where am I being fake, that would be a prompt, and then you would write it for yourself. And you're not afraid because you have the room, you have just a small structure, you make the space, and then your inside talks to you and gives you this information, and you don't have to hide it anymore, and it frees up so much energy. What does vacation mean to me? Um, being served and helped without having to give feedback. Even giving any feedback at all. Um, laying... <laughs> See, I learned about myself with this one. Um, a vacation to me means laying back and being pleasured um, without having to give anything in return, even a vocalization or an expression, being completely receptive and relaxed. Like I feel a twinkle in me even when I say that. So that's there. Um, relying on someone else to plan and lead the way, to think of both of our major needs and take care of us as we do the activities. And like they're ready to be a lighter, a, le a, a lighter, a guide, a leader, a supporter, and then also like buying meals while out and about. Um, experiential learning versus formal learning. Like I get to learn hands on or in the world rather than like from a book writing like dedicated study. Um, and finally, the freedom to plan for later, not just being here now, and all else is compartmentalized. Um, I think I have enough time to do a few more. I'll do a few more. Um, what do I feel is waiting for me in Israel? This was, um, these three are like a, from a bigger set, um, but these are, these, these were, I was very feeling a lot of despair and I didn't have answers. This is some time ago and I wrote these down to answer, um, for the next few days. I couldn't even face it all at once. So here, so what do I feel is waiting for me in Israel? A reliable income, fertile soil, people who are conscious and appreciate me, good weather, um, historical, ancient, embodied, natural wisdom, healing pathways, including song and dance and worship, nutritious balance, beautiful, colorful food, fresh air and sunshine, and ambitious people who make things happen and affect great change and can use my inputs in a streamlined way, supporting me to have my presence shared as a blessing, safety in my body and home and with groups and in couple, partner, romance, sexual relationships, closure around being change and not being the person I used to be the last time I was there. What contributions do I offer my community? People say I'm a natural social worker. Um, people tell me to sing or to lead meditations, um, that I'm nurturing, um, voice, I guess. In, in my voice, um, to do podcasts, and I'm facilitating healing, that I'm cu a cute, beautiful, sweet girl, and my acknowledgments really raise the self-esteem of others who have low self-esteem. <coughs> um, I meant low self-confidence and low um, and insecure self-worth. Um, that I expose people to new perspectives, dynamics, stages, and my willingness to accommodate slowly but surely, learning, adapting respectfully for the sake of others, the allness, and finally, that I am open to learn, like, I'm open to, um, I'm open to understanding, um, and, uh, I'm, I'm grateful for, for attention and receptivity from somebody and their guidance, and I say things like, I noticed you're very good at this, or I love that, you know, um, and finally, t for today, the last one is, what helps my Yiddish Neshama system? Neshama is the word for soul. Um, remind me, remind others that they are light. So feeling the reincarnation energy of Zusha of Anapoli, who didn't say I. He never said I. He said Zusha, or he referred to himself some way, Zusha, some other way. And who only asked for what he needed and who had faith and confidence that he was always on the same side as God. Um, another thing is remembering each challenge that's new is building on something I went through before. Remembering I choose to stay here in exchange for devoting my life to help people and the invisible lover's energy of the soul's partnership with the overstar or the oversoul, the Abrister, is what I get as nourishment for finding a way to be kind and present while I'm here. Um, practicing courage, wisdom, sensitivity, submission, modesty, and boldness. You see there's two sides. I'll read them again. Practicing courage and wisdom, which is two sides of the same point. Practicing sensitivity and submission. Practicing modesty and boldness. Practicing diminishing suffering and... Um, um, unblockage and unblocking. 
Um, so I hope that was interesting. I will, um, because I'm recording this in advance for Friday, I will um, be wishing you a good weekend. And Sunday, hope to have a video of similar topics. Be well. Bye.